everyone. This is Joe. I want to welcome you back to my channel. I am the Digital Astronomer. Today, I want to get back to something that I used to do a lot of. And um, in my early days of my YouTube channel, instead of focusing on a lot of the how to, you know, how to take this image, how to process, I spent a lot of time focused on the objects that I was photographing themselves. And today I want to get back to that a little bit. I want to show you today an image that I captured over the last several weeks of the Rosette Nebula. And I just really want to talk about the object and show you just how cool this nebula is. So stick around and we're going to talk about the Rosette Nebula. Okay, here's my final picture of the Rosette Nebula. The first thing I want to kind of call your attention to is just the size of this nebula. Um, this, if you were thinking in apparent size, okay, in other words, what it appears to be, this nebula would be five times larger than the full moon. In other words, if we were able to brighten this up so that you could see it with the naked eye, it would be five times larger than the full moon in our night sky. And um, in actual size, it, it would take you, if you were going to this side, from this side of the nebula to this side of the nebula, that's 130 light years. And so it would take you traveling at the speed of light 130 years just to go from one side of this nebula to the other. And it is about 5,200 light years away from the Earth. So, uh, uh, you know, even further away from the Earth. That kind of gives you a, a perspective on just how large this is. Now, this is what's called an emission nebula, which means that these very bright stars at its core, this cluster of stars, is actually exciting the gas around it and causing it to glow. It's actually changing and causing the electrons to jump up, you know, into higher orbits. And what that's causing is this gas to begin to glow so that we could see it. Now, if you look at this gas really carefully, you notice it's not just a puff of gas. There's a lot of little waves and little areas in it. I like this area over here where you can kind of see some of the dark gas up here. These little areas down here, I, I haven't been able to find anything to confirm this, but these look like what I've seen in other gala or other nebulae of what's called Bach globules. And these are areas where the gas is beginning to condense down and someday a star will form in these areas. So what you're seeing here is the condensing of gas. In fact, if we look, if, let me just zoom back out a little bit here. If you look at this star cluster at the center of this nebula, these are stars that have been formed out of this gas. In fact, science, astronomers have been able to prove that these stars are gravitationally bound together, so they're traveling as they're moving um, through space, they're all moving together, and that they are all roughly the same age. Now, you know in cosmic terms that can be many, many, many years apart, but, but these stars were all formed from this, ga from this uh, nebula and from the gas, and you can see that they've kind of carved a hole out of the center of the nebula, and they're continuing to do so as new stars are formed. Okay, so if we, we look at this, where do we find this in the night sky? Well, the easiest way to find it is here in Stellarium, you'll see that I'm looking towards the south, and probably the easiest way to find the Rosette Nebula is if you find the Orion Nebula, Look for the shoulder, shoulder stars, Betelgeuse and Bellatrix. And then if you look kind of opposite, kind of fo follow Bellatrix over to the next really bright star, you'll find Procyon. Halfway between Procyon and Bellatrix, you're going to find the Rosette Nebula. Now you could also go up here and find it, kind of make a triangle for yourself from Bellatrix to Alhena to Procyon and 
follow our Hannah down, just kind of triangulate down and you'll find the Rosette Nebula. Another way to do that, if you want to add another guide star in, you could find the star Sirius, which is extremely bright. And if you follow it up and a little bit to the right, you're going to find the Rosette Nebula. And again, if I zoom in here, you can kind of see how I had this set up um, to take the picture. Anyways, um, this picture was, I ended up taking 71 five-minute subframes, which means that this is roughly just shy of six hours of total imaging with 11 flats, 20 darks, and 50 biases. And in order to produce this final picture, what I ended up doing was I separated out the HA and the O3 channels. Now, I'm able to do that because I shoot through the Optolong L-Extreme filter. So I've got my Orion ED80T, then I've got the um, ZWO 183 camera, and then attached to that, I have the um, Optolong L-Extreme filter. I separated out the O2, or the O3 and the HA, and then I recombined them with a kind of a standard HOO uh, picture in uh, Astro uh, Pixel Processor, played around with it in uh, Photoshop, and this was the final image I got. And I'm really happy with it. This is a, um, I, I love when you're looking at uh, nebulae like this, just to look at the little details. For instance, if I uh, move down here, you could see these clouds just sort of uh, uh, billowing up. This almost puts you in uh, reminiscent of the Eagle Nebula, the kind of structures that you see in that nebula. And you can see the little waves and wisps of gas. These all look so dainty and you know and small when you're look at it, looking at them uh, like this but actually these are extremely large structures in uh, our galaxy and uh, again what you're looking at here basically is the uh, nursery for new stars new stars are being formed right inside of this nebula as it collapses and gravity takes hold and eventually all of these little areas where you see these things starting to 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 condense eventually there'll be stars in those places and so how kind of neat i i enjoy uh, uh taking these kind of pictures i hope you like this image um next week i'm going to show you my first image um uh, for galaxy season this year. I've taken a new image of M81 and M82. I'm going to tell you about those two galaxies next week in next week's video. Uh, so be sure to subscribe so that you'll get a notification uh, when uh, new pictures uh, are, new videos rather, are uh, posted up. And I uh, hope you click on like and help me to build my channel. Uh, share this with your friends. And um, next week, we'll talk a little bit more about galaxy season and how I'm getting set up for galaxies. So uh, thanks for tuning in today. I look forward to seeing you next week. Just a quick reminder, if you enjoyed this video, please help support me by clicking on thumbs up and share. Thank you.